Welcome to the end game, the final few episodes of the adventures of the Deus Vault Dynasty. Currently, of course, we are Pope Zhouzhong, the wizard, demigod, reincarnated pilgrim. I don't know why the pilgrim's not really relevant at all. He, uh, he does have the angelic blood, but unfortunately he's got nothing really going for him in terms of the angelic power. So today, that's, that's going to be our focus, becoming hopefully an angel even more hopefully an archangel, reuniting the shattered angelic kingdoms of Europe, which of course we set up and then released so that we could subjugate them later on. We've got Croatia waiting, we've got places like uh, England as well, Sasana there. Um, what else was that? Was it not another one too? It doesn't matter, but either way, we've got to grab all of these back up and try and unify the Christian world, what's left of the Christian world against the the unified, now unified pagan world. Deus Fighter, the the sort of uh, European ancestral god, if you want to look at it like that, the, the very sort of ancient, even before the Roman Roman gods and the Greek gods, there was there was this guy. Uh, it's legitimate. You can look him up on Wikipedia if you want to go and have a look about that. Eventually became, you know, Tia, Jupiter. Um, who else we got here that you might recognize? Zeus, of course, is probably one of the bigger ones. So he's a pretty, pretty major threat with his 71 Marshall, his plus bonus to levy size, what's that, plus 100% to levy size as well. Along with some pretty, pretty, pretty stonking, pretty massive bonuses there. 400% morale damage, 227% extra damage there. This is going to get pretty ridiculous. Um, luckily, we have have the extremely powerful and extremely broken Archangel Lubaget, brother of France, who is just stacking a ridiculous amount of combat bonuses. I don't know how he's done it. There must be somewhere in the Orders of Chivalry mod to scum that up somewhat. Maybe the AI, that maybe there's some like broken vent with the AI. I have no idea how it's happening, but it is happening. So this guy is our secret weapon. Let's hope nothing happens to Lovely, who is of course our current character's grandfather as well. Wow, okay, so, and people were saying, why is he a Carling? Have you not watched? The this was this guy, I need to point this out again, because clearly some people didn't get the message first time. This was a guy we played as in, in an old series. It was called like The Last Carling or whatever. We did it on the channel like, like a month or two ago now. Where we played as the final Carling up in Vermandois and, and built up a dynasty. We played as Brother Love Again and, and, and rebuilt essentially the HRE with uh, with the Carling. So feel free to go check that out if you want to see the backstory of Brother Love Again returning character there. Oh, their capital, interestingly, is in northern Spain. Right, okay. So that puts them in kind of a unique scenario because, of course, we have a lot of land here. They're actually quite isolated from the rest of their empire. A lot of their troops are going to be coming from Scandinavia. A lot of their troops are going to be coming from the, from the from the sort of British Isles there. People are going to kill me for saying that. And, of course, Africa isn't going to provide too many troops, but they do have that wealth coming from the gold mines. So they're quite isolated. What about Valencia? Is that another angelic kingdom? Oh, quite the opposite. What the fuck am I looking at? Olympiad. Romanus Olympiad. Uh, god. How is he a god? What? Oh, my God. He's Athena's son. Right. Okay. So Athena's son is still in charge of this tiny little province over in Spain. His son is a bear. An inbred demigod bear. My god. <laughs> Who'd have thought that that's where the Olympian pantheon would end up? All the way from, you know, Zeus, Kronos, Uranus, whoever. All the way down to this single godly bear. Impressive. And this is base game CK2 as well, by the way. You can become a polar bear in base game CK2. Because that's, it's 2019. Why wouldn't you be able to? Our goal then, stick with the Benedictine Order. Try and become as holy as, as we possibly can in the shortest time possible. I don't know if buying indulgence will ever help us out at all, so I'm probably going to avoid doing that, seeing as, you know, we're the Pope here. So all down to the Benedictine Order to hopefully... Is he a werewolf? He is a werewolf, isn't he? Lycan. Okay, well, close enough. What the fuck is that? Irish pirates? Irish pirate Lycan Conversus. Uh-huh. Welcome to, welcome to Mythos. So there's been another thing that's been requested very, very, very frequently. And in fact, people like this. I might just release it as an entirely separate mod independent of Mythos just for base game CK2 onto the workshop. And that's the ability to restore Christianity as a Catholic. Because you actually can't do that in the base game. You have to be orthodox. I know CK2 Plus lets it so that you can do it if you are Catholic. Because it does kind of, you know, give yourself a nice little end game goal there. So I've just taken the base game event, all the requirements for that, and flipped it so it makes sense for Catholicism. So that all that, you know, the event pops up and it's not like, oh, finally Catholicism is destroyed. What I didn't realize is that we currently sit at four out of five on the places we need to convert to do it. We only need to fix Alexandria and then we've got everything we need to essentially mend the schism. Alexandria, what if they, oh, so there's an independent castle? Oh, there is. What is it? Leto? Oh my god. Wait. <laughs> the god Leto? Apollo's mother is in charge of the castle of Alexandria. Oh, for shit's sake. Um, right, so we're gonna have to go to war with the god. Unfortunately, she's she's got no troops. Well, unfortunately for her, she's got no troops. Fortunately for us, she has no troops. So this should take two seconds, especially if we just get our, our king of Egypt here to fight the battles for us. So all we've got to do is control this and make sure that it's Catholic, which it is. So this is the only downside to this, uh, to being able to, uh, this is the only thing stopping us from being able to mend the schism. Shit, and who'd have thought it would be Apollo's mother hiding out in a random temple in the middle of Alexandria. This should take all of about 30 seconds, I think, especially if we put, like, Archangel Lubbock Look at that. Did you see that on the, on the troop selection? 
Holy shit, my man. <laughs> what are his bonuses up to now, then? Let's take a look. Obviously, I like a little bit of time ticking between episodes. Had to catch back up to where we were, because I cannot actually save the game. So I have to play on till an autosave kicks in before I can uh, actually close things down at the end of videos, things like that. What are we looking at right now, then? My god. Um... Oh, he picked up Organizer. That's nice. Okay, he's got Organizer. His morale damage is massive. It's obviously, clearly, not even close to Deus Vita, though. Um, his damage against religious enemies, 804%. 804%. Phenomenal. Thank you, Archangel Lobbyguette. Very cool. Gloriously gotten all that. I don't know what the hell we did. Some, something related to the Papal State. It is a little bit annoying having to run the Papal State and give people absolution and give them gold and give them claims or whatever else they request from us. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, these guys, though... The Great Trade League, very overpowered at this level of gameplay. The fact that they're offering us like 2,000, 3,000 gold per resource, that was just for a sack of grain, for Christ's sake. Like, if we have gold or, or some important things, you know, obviously resources vary depending on how much they want to pay you, depending on what the resource is. So sack of grain is not going to be worth as much as gold bullion, for example. But it's unbelievable. Like, all of our realm has been funded by the Great Trade League because whenever we siege somewhere down... If they've got a whole bunch of resources, there's quite a high chance we're going to get something from that. And of course, we're doing that per holding. You know, great invasions especially mean that we're going to every single holding, burn it down and taking their resource and then just selling it off at 4,000, 3,000 gold a pop. It's absurd. The amount of the amount of money we've got from this is, is unbelievable. Trying to go into war with what looks to be Tibet there. Nothing really relevant. But of course, if we want to call an invasion or something, I did think about that. Maybe sending China against Deus Vita to, sacri to, to shatter his realm if we wanted to do that and obviously help out China. But it doesn't seem... It doesn't seem like for an epic showdown that we would want to have China do that on our behalf. It seems a little bit weak sauce, huh? Um, what else are we missing then? Completely controls Rome? Oh, shit. Okay, what are we missing in Rome then? I, I completely forgot about, you know, the whole Rome thing. Um, what the fuck is this? The Yom's Vikings. The Yom's Vikings have a castle in Rome. Okay. Um, Orvieto is fine and Orbitello is also fine. So our final our final barrier to uniting Christianity is the fucking Yom's Vikings. They're probably quite proud of that, let's be honest. Let's just move these guys up round through uh, up round through Treviso and send them down to Rome. And then I guess we'll just declare war and have them crush him immediately. We should be able to declare war on them with the retinue sitting right on top of them, right? Because these guys... Oh, they are actually landed! Oh, that's very annoying. Okay, so we might have to go all the way up to Estonia there to go and fight the Yom's Vikings as well, because I very much doubt this will give us 100% war score. Um, okay, what have we got nearby then? What have we got? We've got, obviously, you know, the Swedish capital, Danish capital. I guess we'll raise troops in, like, uh, Wurzburg? That's fine. Get them right on the border. 6,000 troops led by Baguette, and it doesn't matter what the Yom's Vikings try and, try and field at that stage. Look at that horse. My god, that's a nicely designed uh, coat of arms and stuff, huh? What else can we make then? Oh, so our vassals also, I should point out, are, are holy warring. You know, just in their spare time here. Our vassals, because they're powerful, they're part of a massive stable realm, are also going out and ripping apart various states and grabbing... Oh, someone at war with Eurus there. Who the hell declared war on uh, on this guy? Um, He's got 161,000 men. What the fuck were you thinking? Aragon's holy war for Granada. 86% in favor of him, unsurprisingly. Um, oh, you know what? I bet he inherited all those wars. Because all the gods came together. So we got all of their land, all of their personal holdings. But more importantly, would have got all their wars as well. Right, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, this guy's just basically going to be unstoppable for the time being. We'll have to keep a close eye on him. Make sure he doesn't spawn a bunch of fucking kids as well. That would really suck if we had to deal with, like, a whole other pantheon. Right now, it's fairly nicely contained. Let's declare war. We want to get Rome holdings. Thank you very much. And then let's also raise, what did I say, the troops from Wurzburg here. We'll send those guys up to there as well, led by Brother Labaguette, which he already is. Perfect. Okay, nice. This should take all about two seconds. Then I mean, in the first like little bit of this video, we're going to have Christianity reformed. I didn't realize that we were sort of passively already doing that. I guess that comes with trying to form, you know, some variant of Rome, huh? God's blessings upon the Oblatus Jo... Jo... <sighs> Can we just, can we go back to calling, what did I call him before? Like, extremely? Can we rename him back to extremely? That'd be fantastic. Um, ah, oh, I just disbanded my retinue. He's trying to put down boats. Breathe, breathe, breathe. You're fine. Everyone, everyone like, everyone's good. Everyone's fine. Nothing bad has happened. Fuck. I wish they would make it so that you had toggleable retinue disband. A little button here. Literally, paradox. I know you watch my videos. Put a button here. Possible to disband retinues, and then you either tick it or you untick it. Because never once in this game have I ever, ever intentionally disbanded retinues. Never once have I done that. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Right, okay, well, it's not like we haven't got the gold. It's just kind of an inconvenience, that's all, because we had them in position ready to go with the whole with the whole war thing. Right, okay, haha, <laughs> welcome aboard. Right, let's get these guys onto boats immediately, ship them back over to friggin' Rome. 
God damn it. Okay, there's got to be a mod for that. Surely, so if, if anyone knows of a mod that stops you disbanding retinues, let me know right now. Because that's going into every playthrough permanently forever. Where are my boats gone? Uh, excuse me, sir. Where are my boats? I've raised them all. Yeah, but where are they, though? <laughs> um, they seem to have disappeared off somewhere. Okay, I guess we'll get them all back together again. There we go. We've got ancient wisdom there. Incredible stuff. Right, that's, that's more than enough. Thank you. Right, get on the boats. Move them back over to Rome. We can land them right there anyway. Now, how are we doing in regards to our little Teutonic conquest we're doing? Sending our troops up through to Estonia. Where are we? There we go. All right. Uh, and these guys have how many troops going for them? I'm going to assume not many. No. Oh, 15,000. Shit, that's way more than I thought. Oh, he's a giant. Okay, that's kind of cool that the leader of the Yom's Vikings is a half giant. Wow. And that gives them a whole bunch of, like, marsh bonuses, essentially. Giants get it at double the speed at which, uh, which half giants do, which obviously makes sense because they are double the giant. Um, oh shit, this person's a werewolf. Of course this person's a I don't know why I sounded even remotely surprising given that everyone in Friggin' Mythos, you guys have been telling me as well in Discord, that people, that the, the people in their own playthroughs have come across everybody else turned into freaking werewolves too, which is not really much of a surprise in hindsight. They just seem to be sort of, like I said yesterday, they're insidious. They're absolutely everywhere, and once they start getting out of hand, you know, you've got so many, you've got AI targeted in any AI that's a viable candidate. It's, it's kind of absurd. There should be, I don't know, I kind of feel like werewolves shouldn't be allowed to hold land. I don't know if that's a, it's a weird system or not, but I, I, I just kind of feel like it doesn't really suit the playthrough, huh? Anyway, um, but plus you can sort of see some of the side effects of what happens if they do have that. Ingria. Or maybe specific, maybe they can only be tribal or something like that, I don't know. I'm just thinking of trying to find ways to balance this shit. Ah, oh, do we want to emulate our great, great, great grandfather, I think, Kargan Tengri? Do we want to have sympathy for pagans? No. No, we do not. We are going to use his blood for our own power. Right now, of course, we, we've sort of manifested Thor's power in the form of Demigod because our uh, grandmother, who was killed, who? Genuinely was killed by this one-eyed random woman. Oh, my God. There's so many issues. There are so many issues with, with CK2's personal comment skill and why the gods on Earth don't really work. It's Thor's daughter there, killed by a random woman with no depth perception whatsoever. Unbelievable. Right, how are we doing in terms of our refer- Oh, it's ready. Send me in, chief. Religion has an authority greater than 90. Well, we, of course, do. We have 100% because we are the Pope. Let's do it. Boom. The Great Schism mended. At last, the Great Schism between Western Catholic Church and Eastern Orthodox Church have been mended. With the spread of Catholicism and the fall of the Byzantine Empire, including the vital patriarchy of Constantinople, the Orthodox faith now holds little sway over the people of Europe. There will be those who still cling to it, but they will be few in number, and the papacy can once more claim universal rule over all of Christendom. God be praised. There you go. So Orthodox monothe mon mon monothelite, iconoclast, and Paulician will be a heresy of Catholicism. We are now known as the saint. Very nice. Okay, that's going to give us a lot more sway over things, huh? Perfect. Look at that. And we are actually Pope Zhou Zhang the Saint. What a... We, I, I know I said that it's going to be very difficult to outdo some of our previous... Like, like outdoing extremely was very difficult as Brandamina. Outdoing Brandamina as the character that came after her. I didn't, was, that, was that her in hindsight? Um, no, it was this guy who was apparently beatified. That was kind of ridiculous. I remember that now. But we definitely outdid Brandamina with this woman. Completely, you know, set up everything you see here. Signs of the Second Dawn, the Chinese imperialism. Everything was down to her. I feel like we've outdone it again. Pope Zhou Zhong the Saint, uniting Christendom like that. Grand City, all he had to do was really do a couple of wars here and there, but... Yes, okay, so this is what I was talking about yesterday, where we want to focus on not just removing wrath, but flipping it entirely into patient. We didn't get it, that's fairly unfortunate, because that would have been a nice step, but we at least got, I believe, Angel out of that. So now, all it is, is sitting around for the next 15 fucking years, <laughs> donating to charity, fulfilling roles, doing secluded penance, whatever else pops up and whatever we get the, the opportunity to do here, and uh, just ensuring that we are getting some of those better traits. I mean, I'll, I'll try and take every event we have the opportunity to take in the hopes that eventually we do get, um, you know, we do get we do get some more of these ones. What else have we got here? Um, such for a smith obviously won't help. There's really nothing. Let's think about celibacy. Ah, that won't help out either too much, will it? No, I think we've just got to genuinely wait for these goddamn Benedictine order to, to try and help us out a little bit. That'll do it. That'll do it right on cue there. Thank you very much. We've just ignited another pagan there. Gain the straight charitable. Sure. Is that enough to do it, though? Uh, I don't like you. Wait, my, was that my grandfather said? I don't want to come to your feast. Great grandfather, I think. Um, weird man. What a fucking strange man you are. The Pope. The Pope. The head of Christendom. The guy who united the faith. Come to my feast. Nah. Nah, I don't like you, even though we're related. Okay, thanks. Jealous. Jealousy, that's what it is, because he wants the whole empire for himself, huh? Come on. Give me that Give me that angel trait. Maybe it is four out of five. Or four out of seven, sorry. God damn it, I need to go and look at my own freaking mod now. Oh, shit, I completely forgot about that. That's awesome. Stage three is finished for the soaring keep of the Citadel of the First. Nice. 
Wow, look at that. Now, so it's called the Soaring Keeper, the Sith Settler the first. Incredible stuff. Levy size plus 10% is obviously very nice, but I feel like that's from, yeah, that's from our little bonuses there. Cool, so we can build two more features in this. The lights upgrade it to the last level. We need 6,900 6, gold. Very nice stuff. Um, okay, wow, okay, this is pretty incredible, huh? What do you want to go for, then? So, starting from the top here, we can go for, oh my god, there's so fucking many, huh? Keep retinue gives garrison size, which would obviously be pretty good. Toll roads, tax modifier plus 5% would be significant, let's put it that way. Um, we need heating pipes, so we need to get Hippocors first for that one, which gives disease resistance. Honestly, that's not particularly useful for us anyway. Movement speed, again, completely pointless there. Torture chamber doesn't seem to be in the sort of, uh, doesn't really seem to be in the spirit of things, huh? Now, this is nice. Hidden passageways. Higher chance of escaping capture after battle would be pretty good if we were ever crushed by it. If Deus Fighter turned up to try to take all of our people prisoner, higher chance of obviously escaping there. Um, siege defense. or build a big old moat around the fucking thing. Artifacts that's likely to be stolen. Don't think we really have to worry about that anyway. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's build a moat around our gigantic keep. And then we'll upgrade it to the final level. That's going to be very, very expensive. What else have we got upgrading here? Um, Calliopoly Fortress. That's being rebuilt, right, of course. Uh, what about uh, Extremely Deus Vault's Extremely Deus Vault? That's still a very long way away. I don't think, honestly, and this is one of the big problems with Wonder System, I don't think we're going to be able to get it up to stage 4 by the time the campaign ends, and it's been going on for 200 years. Bear in mind, we started building these with our first character. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And you've got to remember, we've got all those ridiculous building bonuses, all of that stewardship bonus, all of the angelic traits, all of the gold as well. I just don't see how this is feasible to do in a regular campaign. At long last. So it was three after all, having lived as a paragon of virtue and righteousness, having united the faith on earth. Yeah, thanks for that. Boom, angelic form. Now, I don't remember whether we need Archangel or not to be able to uh, to, to subjugate these angelic rulers. Ah, oh, thank God. Wait, angelic subjugation. Oh, thank fucking God for that. Council say no. The council say no. Are you kidding me? Why? Zealot. There are other... We need to... Fuck this council. Fuck them. Uh, wall declaration. How about ruler? How about ruler? Um, we need to... Uh, we probably want to bribe all of these people first. So let's buy some favors from everyone. We've got enough gold to do so. And I said, what the hell are we going to spend our money on? A lot of you guys point out we could be going to... Uh, essentially, every realm on the map. Building hospitals, castles, upgrading vassal holdings too to ensure that everybody loves us. Honestly, not super, not super relevant right now. I mean, we've already got this much. I would rather have the 16 gold in the bank just in case we need to send money to people. Just in case, like, vassals request things from us, that type of thing. Oh, that's the reason I wanted to keep it paused and request more simultaneously. Because that way they are, uh, they are, you know, more likely to agree to it. If you've already bought two favors and then these guys have a chance to respond later on. Chance I'll say no, because they sort of see what you're up to. This is exactly why I wanted that gold in the bank. Because now we're down to 2,000. 600 gold. Fucking hell. Um, boom. Please vote. And if you say no, you're going to get some favors called in. In fact, I'm just going to call in the favors anyway. Let's be honest. Call in council support. Thank you. Call it. This should be enough to pass it without, you know, even, even if everyone else votes no. This should be more than enough. Um, I'm going to do it anyway, and we'll see what other laws we can pass through, if possible. We might have, like, crown laws or something we want to wanna run past the council to there. Is that is that good enough? There we go. War declaration is now ours. We can go for Corpus Iris Canonici. Um, Toodle Vassal Opinion plus five. What does this one give right now? Um, nothing. So get plus five Feudal Vassal Opinion, plus 20 Church Opinion, piss off the burgers a little bit. But because we are Chinese Imperial, the burgers don't dislike us anyway, if that makes sense. Uh, we have no negative Vassal Opinion. Uh, besides that, it also gives a bonus to our domain size. There's no reason not to go for that one. I would kind of prefer Controlled Realm Inheritance somewhat. Um... Titles will be lost on succession. We would lose this guy. I don't know why. Not that it matters too much. Um, you know what? I'm going to go for that. Fuck it. There's no reason not to. We might as well force it through now that we've bought all those favors. Oh, right. We can pass it for every single title we've got as well, can't we? If possible. Um, is there anything else worth passing right now? No, there we go. We can pass two anyway. Childhood Reformed Werewolf Challenges. Ah, I'm so glad I can show you guys what's going on behind the scenes here. So it turns out the Holy Roman Empire, uh, which we get to vote in, even though it still exists... Oh, it still exists. Fine, we'll try and destroy that when we can. Um, so this is how the werewolf challenges work, right? So if your liege is a werewolf and you're a werewolf, you can declare war on them, or you can challenge them to a duel, essentially, to, uh, and whoever wins becomes the new leader of the Empire, Kingdom, whatever. You can affect it so that uh, traditional, there you go, so rulers may be challenged, challenged over tyranny or negative prestige. Uh, challenged may be sought against new, incapable, infamous, child, deformed, or weak rulers. Or you can go for an alternative which restricts it so they can't challenge you so frequently however it will affect your opinion similarly you got like time restrictions so this one um rulers may not receive new challenges within one year challenges have no restrictions whereas this one challenges have time restrictions but you can't do it so frequently or some shit like that basically this is why the werewolf realms are not only like in the game quite heavily but also so uh, 
unstable might be the right word, because it's all based on personal combat, and after we've seen in CK2, personal combat might as well just be fucking irrelevant, huh? Um, honestly, the dual system is so garbage, any sort of RNG empire succession system is clearly not going to be fantastic. So the HRE still exists, that's interesting to know. Where are they? Um, let's, let's see if we can dig up the title here. So, Holy Roman, they do exist, you fuckers. Um... Let's try and destroy that then. Dismantle Pagan Realm. Oh, that would do it. All he's got is a castle in Savoy. So we'll just declare war, raise the troops in Savoy because it's kingdom level title. Have our boy siege it down and that should be, hopefully, the end of the HRE. What I might also do as well is just very quickly, if we got, stop, stop that. Oh, who have we got raised? Oh, I fucking wonder who we've got raised, you fool. Let's get everyone to dogpile onto that and speed this up as much as possible. And that, in theory, should be the end of our Holy Roman Empire. I'm going to mark them as special interests so that we can just make sure that it is... It's gone. It's actually gone. Thank God for that, to be honest with you. We can't create empires. Why? Um, I don't know. But, well, I mean, I wouldn't want to make the HRE anyway. That's impressive stuff. Um, oh, now we can apparently also subjugate some... I feel like that's completely unrelated. Don't worry about that too much. My God, our vassals have been expanding, huh? Very, very nice. My god, they've grabbed some real random provinces here and there as well. They've, they've tidied up the borders very, very nicely. Italy seems to be falling into line as well. Our goal now then, because we've we've become that angel at long last, we can start subjugating people. Now, I've completely disbanded the retinue and started again because a lot of it was kind of crappy, I'll be honest with you. We've got like pikemen, archers, random things that we've inherited from various realms. So I've collapsed the whole thing and we'll start rebuilding it. And of course, as we sell more shit, we'll be able to rebuild it. Hopefully fairly quickly here. Even with all of these wonders being rebuilt, we're still making like 300 gold a month or something absurd like that. So this should take no time at all to rebuild. Yeah, look at that, 400 gold per month. This should take no time at all, nope, to rebuild our retinue. We do get to decide on saints. We just don't get to decide on beatification. Interesting. So we've got this guy here, beatified. Oh, but he's a werewolf. He's a werewolf. I can't. I can't do that. Blessed Gauthier is not a fitting candidate. I'm sorry. He's a werewolf. I, I, I can't after the amount of stress and aneurysms they've given me over the course of this entire playthrough. I can't willingly make one of those guys. I do love that we get to pick the Saints. Fortunately, it's a shame we can't pick whoever gets beatified. So, you know, it's kind of luck whether or not... It's basically guaranteed if a family member of ours becomes beatified that they can become a Saint. But outside of that, we've just got to hope the game sort of works in our favor a little bit. As this fella grows older, whoever the hell he is... Um, no, I'm not. I'm not giving him my my powers. We are also doing secluded penance, so in theory we might be able to get. What have we? Have we not got? We not got patient. Patient would be ideal. That'd be fantastic, and it's of course another step to becoming an archangel as well. That would do. I think twenty four thousand five hundred uh, cavalry, exclusively cavalry, is obviously quite nice. Let's get to work on smashing some realms then. So I want to take him out as soon as possible because of course that is still one of the one of the Olympian gods. Let's go grab Croatia. He's still an angel. Okay, right. I'm I'm really pushing my luck with this. We need to go and grab that as soon as possible, really. Then we'll go and get England as well and just sort of make sure everything is is under back back under our realm. Excellent stuff. We have gained the trait humble. Now those of you with your eagle eyes may have noticed this is a bit of a concern. Gandalf agreed to the demand from King Darius of Eurus and converted to the proto-European faith. Wow. So I wonder if he... Now that there can exist no religious hex, of course, you know, how the fuck am I supposed to implement that? How I know nothing about it. But this could be... This could be something to keep an eye on. They might end up flipping... It would, it would really, really suck, because right now he technically is a ruler whose vassals are not of his religion. They might like him, because he's obviously a quite powerful god and everything... But in terms of troop count and things like that, Temple Vassals, Garam are probably not going to like him a huge amount. So we'll have to keep a very close eye on that. Make sure he doesn't convert the whole world to a, a unified pagan religion, because that would really suck. Right, angelic subjugation. Here we go. Now the council can't say no to me. We're basically free to do this. Let's get Stalwart. Stalwart? Uh, why is... Oh, because I've got... Right, yeah, to actually pay for these retinues, I've got uh, Archangel to get there actually collecting taxes, which has given us a nice little uh, nice little bonus there on top of everything. 381 gold per month is absolutely insane, given that we're maintaining six wonders and a retinue of like 25,000 horsemen. It's kind of unbelievable here, so this is going to be a very, very powerful army. Let's get this dealt with as soon as possible, because I know this guy's at war with some other people. Last thing I want to do is stop our vassals expanding. You know, I don't want to end up fighting his own troops if we can avoid it, because these could be offensive wars where he's going to grab more land, which, of course, will eventually be ours here. So I want to sort of take this carefully and try and avoid getting into too many skirmishes and just stick to the sieging because that's not going to affect him too much, I hope. Um, wait, what is that? Is that recently new administration? Oh, they've still got to deal with that, huh? I guess they haven't got recently conquered anymore because it was ages ago we actually conquested uh, Croatia from Asgard, I think it was. It's struggling to keep track of things at this stage. Oh, shit, we became a true Christian knight. Awesome, there we go. That's very, very nice, obviously, because we are uh, quite a high martial character there and have no sins or anything. We did it, Patrick. We saved the city. Croatia is now, once again, under angel law, but we had to burn fucking everything. Or at least that's what I'll be saying in a few minutes when we actually have finished off burning everything here. Again, I want to avoid fighting their troops because I feel like they're going to do some... Ah, nice. 
Gonna do some good work for us here. What is that? Germanic Uprising. Oh, not today, my friend. Let's go. We might have to go and uh, take a little bit of a diversion here over to go and deal with these goddamn pagans. Which I think, as is my juicy here, you know, as the Pope, as the leader of this unified angelic empire. Could you, could you piss off the Knights Templar? What? Uh, no. No, the Knights Templar have not just been founded. That's actually how we started this campaign, if you don't mind. Right, so we want to avoid fighting these troops here. Because they are most likely just either defending their realm or expanding their realm. Uh, both of which is, is going to be our realm. So I'd rather not, you know, I'd rather not kill them dead. How much? Oh, God, I'm going to have to siege fucking everything, aren't I? To avoid any sort of skirmishes or conflicts or killing off their troops, I think I'm going to have to kill absolutely every settlement. Uh, very nice. That's a Chinese war horse to the treasury. So that was our, uh, when two of our horses. Oh! The Chinese Imperial Realm. How incredible. Um, two of our horses obviously had a, had a foal there, and that's now odd enough. That's kind of a cool system. You come in a, we could become a very famous horse breeder. Obviously, we're not. We've got enough on our plate already without having to worry about fucking, you know, juggling Pokemon or whatever. Speaking of which, can we get that Can we get that legendary horse? Hey, you want to send me that horse yet? Boom. Send me that shit. Um, so 1% one 1 chance of gaining it, but that also means it's not somewhere out there in the world. Boom. What do we get? Chinese War Horse again. I'm going to get this before this campaign ends. Mark my damn words. What does this do? Diplomacy plus two, national revolt is minus 1%. It's garbage. It's absolutely, I'm going to say it. it's garbage. I don't, I don't want it. I, oh, I don't want it. Daniel, I'm not interested in it. I don't want you. I might send it off to China. Um, this child, again, do we not have a court educator? I feel like sending the angelic uh, emperor pope to go and educate your goddamn son is not really, not really on my list of things to do. He's an angel, I guess. He does have that angelic blood. If they're going to count as siege, we are going to have to fuck it. What am I talking about? Let's just kill him. Let's just kill him. I don't want to be going to war with Croatia for 500 years. That's going to do much more damage to them than just getting this battle out of the way, huh? Oh, yeah, please reinforce. You've got to remember this guy leading troops is an angel, so he's not going to be such a pushover. Done. Thank you very much. Welcome. Welcome to the Empire, my friend. Perfect. Look at that. Nice. Let's go and grab England next then, seeing as they're just sat there basically uh, fresh for the picking. I'd love to tidy up Italy as well. I very much doubt we can get Rome done for today. What else do we need? Um, Ferrara, Sicily, Aprila, Capua is all Italy. My god. And then, oh my god, we're, we're so incredibly close. It's literally just Italy. And then tidying up a couple of castles in, in Tunisia and Jerusalem. Oh my god, and we had ourselves- Oh, wow! Angelic blood, magical heritage, powerful. You are the perfect son. Welcome. Uh, Z Yi Jing, more like, extremely. I know when they ascend to becoming the, the rank of Pope, they're just gonna get rid of a random- Did you think Paradox ever thought that this would happen? When they added the China. When, when they added the China. That's my, that's my professional games journalism review right there. When they added the China, do you think they ever thought that someone would make a Chinese imperial papal state that, that spanned most of Europe? Probably not. <laughs> Whenever you ascend to become the rank of Pope, you get given a random Chinese name. Global customs. Oh my god, we've actually got enough. Nice. So I just put in some more points into tech there to help build up our fortress to the next level. My god, look at this. Wow. So we need improved keeps level 7 and noble customs level 7 now, and we can get ourselves a citadel. A true citadel of the first door. Not just this shit. Not this bloody garbage thing. Soaring keep. Rubbish. Like, this thing. This is why the wonders are so shite, right? Even with all the bonuses. Even with all the thousands and thousands of gold we've stuck into it. Even with any other bonus we pick right now. That is not as good as this thing that just takes tech points. It really is not. This obviously enables us to build all the other buildings too. Like even a keep. A level 6 keep is massively going to outshine this soaring keep. This cost is probably something close to 20,000 gold right now. And this is why it needs severely rebalancing I think. Right, let's unify the UK under our banner as well. That's really funny to me, given that I'm from near that area. My god. What was its name again? Sorry, I've got to take that in a minute. Fi Fianchi de Ipsham. Incredible. Right, so let's go for uh, Angelic Subjugation. Bring them on board before they lose even more rounds. You can see that clearly, given that we set up the, the, the county of England, they've lost a whole bunch of shit here. They've lost a lot of sort of northern England, Merseyside, Lancaster area. Bloody idiots. Right, okay, let's, let's do this then. Um, angelic subjugation. Quickly, let me let me help you. I'm the Pope. I want all the stuff, by the way. This should take no time at all. Now, granted, smashing their troops in this scenario is probably very bad because it's going to make them very susceptible to... Oh, my God, we're already at 96%. Fucking hell. Promoted to Commissus, did that say? Oh, we're already at the top level. That was easy. Boom. Welcome back, England, to, uh, to the fray. Okay, we've unified Catholicism. We've unified... We've unified all the angelic realms. All that's left to do then, and there's a very small left to, uh, amount actually actually that we should do here, is just unify Rome. We need to take essentially what's left of... Oh shit, our vassals actually grabbed up Jerusalem for us. You got Ferrara, Sicily, Capua, Aprila, and then it's just Tunis. Uh, which I think would mean we would have to go to war with Eurus here, I'll be honest with you. Um, oh my god, did they actually seriously... Ah, that sucks. 
They control a single county. We'd have to get this one. And how many troops he got? Wait. Oh no, I wonder if he'll- Are you actually fucking kidding me? There we go. That's the fucking campaign over. Thank I hate this game. I hate this game. I wonder if he'll come back next episode. Whoa, that big bad boss that I definitely didn't spend fucking hours setting up events and codes for. Go, oh, wouldn't that be a shame if he were to die randomly? I'm sure his power means that he will not be def Are you actually fucking kidding me, game? Deus Fighter, slain by this dude with 65 personal combat. I fucking hate the personal combat. I just fucking hate jewels in this game. Just stop it. Goodbye, Ferrara. Time to die. Uh, we could just- Oh, we could Papal War it. Wait, we get the Papal Casas Bella. That's very, very nice. Uh, wow. Okay. I didn't even think about that. Nah. Uh, emulate Pep in the shop by fighting to restore the Papal Lands to the theme of Ferrara. I mean, to our rightful owner, that's us. So we might as well just fucking Holy War it, huh? Now we unify Italy, and then all we've got to do tomorrow is actually grab at that tiny little province in Judas, and we've got the whole of the Roman Empire, or at least enough to be able to call ourselves the Roman Empire once again. Very, very nice. Let's get, uh, let's get Lubbock out on these armies, because it's not particularly large, right? Whoop, sorry. I was the in seclusion, coward. Um, it's not a particularly large army, and of course we don't need a lot of siege and that type of thing. And it would really help out having a dude with eight or nine or ten or however many he's got at this stage leadership traits on the the forefront of our armies. There, um, he's leading armies somewhere. My God, he's upgraded. He's upgraded his heavy cavalry to knight leader. Whoa, this guy's unbelievable. I love him so much. Uh, why? Why are you? You could help me out with with my wars, though, my man. There we go. Let's kick him off of his own armies. That seems a little unfair. And put him on ours. There we go. TK two, everyone. Excellent stuff. That's another one down, and we can now make the Duchy of Ferrara, and that was a holy war, so we got everything right. So let's give it. To, so let me show you how we have to set up feud level titles, otherwise they immediately become uh, duchies. So we want to give him now a a title. There we go. Oh, sorry, sorry. They don't immediately become duchies. They've immediately become republics. So we have to slowly upgrade him. So we have to give him a castle, then give him a county. I don't know what the hell is causing it. Then we have to give him Ferrara after that, and fingers crossed. Yeah, there we go. We've got ourselves a nice. Uh, we've got ourselves a another one. Oh, what do you want? Um, oh, this guy's asking me to unexcommunicate this fella. Can vote for his fidelity. Sure, whatever. Fine. Um, so the only other issue to this sort of major, ignore that. That's clearly, it's clearly a mistake in the game code. That should be Death Fighter. Um, the issue with this right now, if you can't tell, is that Eurus have a lot of land in Italy as well. So we're going to have to go with, w to war with them either way. We've got what's left of the false Deus Vault Satan worshippers. Descendants of the corrupted Saint Honorius here. Um... Just go for a fucking invasion. I'll take the whole thing. Or we could holy war them too. That could also work. Um, what would we take? Oh, they've got like literally like three different dynasties. Oh god, sorry, different uh, different duchies. That's very annoying. We could go and, in and invade the realm of Sicily, dismantle it, break it up into uh, different. Uh, that would be different duchies. The only controls one. That would work. Let's do it. Let's dismantle his realm. Boo! It's your boy. Uh, you know the proper Deus Vault family, not one of these dirty set. I can't believe, to be honest, how long this Luciferian branch of the Deus Vault family have existed. They've never really been a threat besides Honoris himself for getting his events born fire giants or whatever it was. Um, they've not really done a huge amount. They've, they've hung on very, very well, though, to say that, you know, a lot of the patron houses barely lasted five minutes, speaking of which, I'll do an update on those next episode. Um, but to say that the, the, the patron houses barely hung on throughout all these holy wars, yet this dynasty have stuck around for a very... Do they get the bonuses for us being crusaders? That's bullshit. That doesn't make it. Demons... Lucifer and worshipping demon fallen angels get bonuses because we crusaded. That's not. That's not right. That's. Not, I don't. I don't really like that. Thank you. What? The local peasants have revolted. They are outraged that their ruler is a savage monster. Rich coming from you, Fireface. What the fuck? Harlack. Harlack of the Corsican Monster Hunter. You're a demon. Oh, I guess we we are the monster, right? It's like alien. We would be an alien on an alien planet. Got it. Understandable. Thank you. Um, well, who did they rebel against? Because clearly that wasn't me. Because oh, sorry, Zhao Ji's chamber and gave her my great grandmother. Who? <laughs> Who? <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. It's good to be the Pope. Oh my God! What a reaction to fucking your great grandmother. It's good to be the Pope. My God. Oh, I hate that. Come on, give us something, G give us that Archangel, boom, nothing, we got charitable, haha, <laughs> again, very fun, I'm not arresting, has been viciously slandering me, to be honest, he didn't come to our coronation, I feel like he has dreams of perhaps stepping, because he was completely sidestepped, he's one of the only members of our dynasty who didn't inherit directly from their, from their, from their parent, right, so obviously it went honorious, his 
son, Astaroth. Oh, right, that was when he became a demon. Ignore that. So, his son, Galahad, didn't inherit, but then, of course, Brandamina did. Stalwart didn't inherit, but his son, Min Zhong, did. And then his daughter, Deus Vault, uh, Gao Zhu did, who, was, who we played as the last time. And then, of course, we have now inherited. So, he's one of the only characters besides Galahad who didn't actually inherit in the whole dynasty. Um, you can keep the information to ourselves, because I don't particularly becoming a kin don't, don't want to be a kinslayer today. What happens if we do become a kinslayer? Can we grant ourselves absolution? I will assume we could, or we could at least probably ask the Pope, and then we would have the choice. But My great-grandmother has informed me she is pregnant with my child. Oof. Oof. She can take her. That's going in there. That's going in the bank. By which I mean the bank of screenshots, not any other bank. Are you fucking... Get out of here. Get out of here with that shit. This is YouTube. You can't say that. He's surrendering. Excellent. Top level tiles will be destroyed. Boom. Goodbye. That should split into three different duchies, which means we can holy war every single one of the damn things. Thank you. I appreciate you. I mean, he's going to lose his realm anyway because they're all in rebellion and whatnot because he's a different religion and a lot of this is still, you know, Norse. So that goes apparently in Orc. But there's still a lot of, you know, this is this area was owned by Asgard at one stage. I thought he was surrendering. This doesn't seem to be fucking surrendering. Truce Breaker gives us minus five diplomacy, but it lowers all other religions opinion of us so so other religions doesn't mean all other religions like pagan and buddhist or whatever fucking else what it means is the other religion group which is demon um so it's it's gonna make demon worshippers hate us honestly who gives a fuck what they think uh, i'm gonna say it i don't give a flip oh my god he still holds two separate dynasties are you shitting me right now oh you dirty man okay fine turn around turn turn those horses around let's kill them ah oh, no my daughter born to my great grandmother has been denounced her no idea what you're talking about oh for fuck's sake Great, so the King of England is also a werewolf, by the way. I, uh, Mythos, you make me want to just shit everywhere, honestly. Who better to take up the charge against the last demons of our dynasty than Archangel Lubbergat? Smash the heretic, purge the unclean, drown his kit kitten in a bathtub? Why was I going to say that? That's a horrible thing to do. I would never do that. What are you talking about? Is that hard? This is, sorry, it's the devil speaking. I don't know what. <clears throat> right, that's, we need to work on a war chant is what I'm getting at. Shouting about drowning pagans' pets in, in anywhere, to be honest, is not really a good look for you. You're, you're certainly not the good guy in that scenario. Okay, you're next on my kill list. I'm, I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do any war crimes here. Goodbye, Salerno. You are next on my you are next on my list, thank you. And then that's basically it. Then what we've got to do is go to war against the big guys, of which I'm sure Deus Fighter will return next episode. Ha 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 ha. I wonder if he'll come back as a fucking werewolf. Wouldn't that be a plot twist? Oh my god, I'm getting so many ideas about that now. Right, I shouldn't excuse me. I don't care about my commanders improving. We're literally in the middle of war. Oh, by the way, Leech, your commander is now slightly better at swinging a sword. Great, thank you for interrupting. Right, let's get this shit. I feel like, I've probably said this before, and I feel like I've said it during this campaign. During war, certain events should be kept on the back burner until you're done with war, at which point you get, like, a, like an overview. Like, a screen pops up, by the way, here's shit that happened. And then you can click through them and sort of approve or deny it or whatever else. And then default to, you know, deny as events do if you leave them on the screen for too long. I feel like it'd be a much better system than being constantly... So one thing I will admit really fucks me off with CK2 is the amount of interruptions you get when you're in the middle of war. Like, oh, this guy's having a feast. Do you want to go? Oh, this guy's getting coronated. Do you want to go? Your grandson's now lazy. I don't care. I honestly could not give less of a shit. That's why I'm glad you could change all the message rules and whatever. But even then, it's still not enough because there are certain times where you don't. It should be like there should be an option during war. Never tell me about this shit. And with that, Italy, as far as we can take it, is taken. Goodbye, my friend. Thank you. Boom. Look at that shit. Oh my god. Did I? Oh no, no, no. It's fine. We did a we did a holy war. Huh? Okay, we're good. Oh man, I thought I'd uh, thought I'd done the wrong thing there. Incredible stuff. Look at that. And now, how far away are we from Rome at this point, then? We only need Capua, Aprila, Tunis, and Sicily. Uh, I mean, I mean, Tunis and Sicily are both clearly on the Eurus there. We've got Ca Capua also as well. Um, so all of them now, we have to go to war against Eurus with. Then we can form our empire, and then we can shatter their own. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. We are maybe just one episode away from finally... Destroying the pagan menace. The unified pagan pantheons are almost dead. Deus fault, everyone. Deus fault. Big thanks to Alpha Scuff, Anthony Gonley, Asuna Kurito, Atmos, Savage Gamer 419, Bacon Kitten, Daniel, Sedini, Crazy Pack, Croesus, Donald, Fukuna Vasquez, Fluffernutter, Ghost of Protocol, Gogolus, Harik, Jimbo, Jonah Waters, Jocelyn, Dean, Tesla. Now I've got an option to paste. Get the hell out of here. Justin Wallace, Kaden Carter, Michael Mullen, Musk Gratful, Natbuskus 911, Nathan Flores, Necrophilin, Pelvis Presley, Rodin, Scott, Skaz, Somnus, Shayek Sinclair, The Forsaken One, T-Bag Cruz, Tom Terry, Tyler Candle, Vacuus Backus, and William Green. 
for the support the insanity lovers on patreon thank you guys for making the youtube bible in the first place thank you for making this haul possible hope you guys have appreciated this garbage uh rubbish constant warfare constant map painting scenario we're almost through we're almost through my friends only one more episode and then the pagans are finally extinguished after what feels like a goddamn lifetime a big thank you as well has to go out to Asaro, Adam Person, Aiden W, Andrew Wilson, Attila, Austin Taylor, Bordoom, Ben Trope, Esmus Max, Bessie Valerian, Black Double H, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Dunk Honey Seven, Easy to Pronounce Name, Emerald Beam, Exploded Knees, Fraser Brennan, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, Genji Zerka, Gompo, Grey, Haji Demar, Henrik Stensgard, Icarus, Icy the Great, Irish, Israel, Isaac Asparos, Jay Lara, Jacob Wolfie, James Barnes, Jason Sushu, Jose, Yoran DeVries, Jessica Smith, John Holiday, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beer, Justin Plot, Justin Walters, Laura Philippe, Roy Lemaire, Llewellyn Thomas, Luke Wallace, Monty, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Pan Samu, Pan Pearl, Payback 137, Peyton Denisar, Rush Donalgaard, Billionaire, Smirtworm, Socrates, Super Nanny 089, Talar, Baragon, Fudu Mumbo, Wesley Grayson, Wall Wade, Wilson Atef, Wolfie, Yorkers, and Zico 2. See you guys all for the final episode, I would assume, tomorrow.